there. <laughs> what are we doing? Hi. <laughs> you talk. I'm <laughs> Apparently we're doing like the locomotion or something. Sir. <laughs> Down to business. Hi guys. Uh, we are going to talk to you guys today about um, supplements. Mm -hmm. We get a ton of questions about when should I take them? When did you guys first start taking what supplements to take? Fat burners, uh, protein powders, meal replacements, yeah, pre-workouts, all of it. So we're going to go through the ones we actually take, our opinion on what works and what doesn't, and our opinion on what maybe you want to try if you're just starting out intermediate or you're trying to build muscle. And also we get a lot of questions on can you or did we take protein powder or supplements when you first started on your journey? So we're going to do our best to answer all of that stuff for you. Um, but let's start with the biggest one, the one we get asked the question, the most questions about, and that um, is meal replacements. Meal replacements, um, no. We do not recommend <laughs> meal replacements. No. Because in our opinion, they don't replace meals. They're not going to keep you full. Um, they, they actually will cause more cravings, uh, you'll be starving yourself and they don't, your body doesn't process liquid in a meal replacement no. as it does real chicken, rice, broccoli. You were born with teeth, people. Well, no, you weren't, but they grow in. <laughs> There's a reason you have teeth Imagine for chewing. Imagine you were born with teeth. <laughs> that would be really weird. But you have teeth for a reason. Liquid meal replacements no they may contain nutrients vitamins and minerals but they will not keep you satisfied eating a meal with a variety of different nutrients keeps you satisfied makes you feel like you're eating um chewing aids in the whole being satisfied and the digestion process if you're just drinking your meals or if you're just eating them in a meal replacement bar you're not getting the experience of a meal that is why food grows on this earth people is because you're supposed to eat it um meal you may lose weight starting out in the mm -hmm. long run it will uh come back to haunt you because mm -hmm. you will ruin your metabolism by starving yourself and using meal replacements and you'll actually, in the long run, you'll put on more weight than when you started with. So we say don't, don't avoid meal replacements. Yes. And we are saying this because we both took meal replacements when we were struggling and yo-yo dieting our, um, when we were younger. Um, I did the Slim Fast. I did the Weight Watchers. I did all of that stuff. I ate the Slim Fast bars. I drank the shakes. And then at night, I would binge because I wasn't eating full meals. I was drinking shakes and having bars, and it wasn't enough. I never felt satisfied. I wasn't eating. I was hungry. Um, so, yeah. Moving on to protein powder. Yeah, meal replacements then lead into another question we get a lot, which is, can I use protein powders for a meal replacement? That is not what they're mm -hmm. meant for. Um, we have a couple here to show you guys. It doesn't matter which brand. I mean, do your research, look online for reviews. We've taken all of these. Um, they're great. Look, look online for, you know, information on each product and flavors and that. But anyways, protein powders. Um, okay. So protein powder, um, we take the whey isolate. There is something else called casein protein, which is a slower digesting protein. The majority of the stuff that you see that's on the market um, and that's available to you is the whey isolate, which is a faster digesting protein. Um, this is used for, a lot of people take it post-workout. Um, some people do have one at night. Um, you can have it any time throughout the day, but it's not for replacing real food. Real um, food is, we're, you're going to hear a lot of uh, repetition this, real food is always better. Yes. Getting your protein from eggs and egg whites and lean proteins like fish and chicken. Tuna. You cheap, know, easy. 
cottage cheese, Greek yogurt, that's all better than supplementing with protein shakes. If you're looking to, um, and a lot of people think that protein powders build muscle. Protein powders are meant for repairing muscle and preventing the breakdown of your tissue, your muscle tissue. And that, in turn, will help you build muscle. Yeah, they don't, protein But they don't build your it, muscle. It doesn't build muscle. Um, it helps you repair already torn down muscle. From, from lifting weights. And the reason they're called supplements is because that's exactly what they do. Yes. Or what they're meant to do. They are meant to supplement an already decent diet. Yes. So we use protein powders to fill in the gaps in between meals or to up our protein intake a little bit. It's not meant to be a meal. Yes. Like our post-workout shakes, it's mostly egg whites and we add the protein powder in to give us that little extra protein. And post um, post a weight training workout, the most important thing is actually carbohydrates that you get in if you're looking mm -hmm. to build muscle. So you do also need that to stop your muscle breakdown, but yes, this is not needed if you're starting out on a journey. Sorry to cut you off. No, that's okay. Yeah. Protein powders are great to supplement a diet. And if you are starting to up your training, and you're starting to add in weights and cardio mixed together and all that, then we do recommend a protein powder. Hmm. Um, it, it'll help fill in your diet, but you have to be eating properly and hydrating properly for, these, for the protein powder to work. Yes, exactly. Um, thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> um, next, let's move on to another question, um, fat burners. The answer, do fat burners burn Fat. No. No. The answer is no. No way, Jose, never in a lifetime, no. baby, boy, and friends, <laughs> do they burn fat. What they do is they contain caffeine, they give you energy and focus to work out, to and the fat. workout is what burns your fat. So if you sit on the couch and take a fat burner, you're not burning any fat. The, there is no magic pill. Um, if you, there would be no fat, bur if people took fat burners and they burned your fat and you didn't have any more body fat. Gyms would go out of business. There would be no more fat burners on the market because you'd only need to take one or two and all your fat would be gone. Yeah. They, they're good. Um, we sometimes do alternate them in between a pre-workout and we'll discuss pre-workouts later because they do give you energy. But we don't take them to burn fat because they don't burn fat. You could save yourself a lot of money and drink really strong coffee if you want it. A Energy and a focus. fat burner or a green tea or a coffee or whatever, right? Yeah, I'm sure like we don't take green tea, but green tea probably does more for you than a fat burner would. Um, a fat burner in our opinion, and we've also used fat burners when we, when we thought they would help us burn fat. They are a waste of money. If you're in looking for them to just burn fat, yes. they don't burn fat. They give you energy. If you're looking to try one because, you know, you found a really good fat burning powder that tastes good and you want some energy. And you don't get side effects and it gives you good energy for your workout, then, then, that's, then that's fine. Then it's not a waste. But, but if you're looking for them to burn your fat, they won't burn your fat. Um, what will burn your fat is proper diet and exercise. And, yeah. and you know, it that sucks that you have to do it that way but it that's the way it is that's how it is yep um so my friends we're moving on to something called creatine creatine is awesome creatine works creatine is also one of the only supplements that you'll see in the entire supplement store that you visit that actually has scientific tests done on it for decades it's one of the oldest tested um, supplements and um, you want to tell them what creatine is how it works who should use it I think you're I think you got this one in the bag actually Okay, I got it in the bag <laughs> creatine is great for muscle building what creatine does your muscles naturally produce a little bit of creatine okay so what a creatine supplement does essentially it drives more water into your muscle. Water brings the nutrients, your egg whites, your oatmeal, whatever you're eating, your protein powder, um, 
water is how nutrients travel through your muscle to repair it, to build it. Creatine allows more water and more nutrients to be driven inside the muscle. So it's great. Um, a scoop a day, five grams is the recommended dose. If you're weight training, if you're just doing cardio and you're trying to lose weight, you and probably you probably don't need it. Yeah. Um, but if you want to have some muscle mass, which I think everyone should, even if you're trying to lose weight, knowing what we know now, we would have liked to have kept more muscle instead of losing weight and losing muscle along with it the whole time. So, um, but creatine is great. Creatine is proven, it builds endurance. This is for weight training. It builds endurance, strength, stamina, um, and it actually does help you build muscle mass. And it also helps repair your muscles as well. And um, girls take this too. Not It's not just for guys. Um, it's for everyone, and if you are a vegetarian and you don't, then you wouldn't be eating red meat, then you should definitely be taking creatine, especially if you are lifting weights, you should be taking creatine. Creatine, yeah, I forgot to mention that. It's also found in red meat, but a lot of people don't like to eat a lot of red meat, and right. also we just naturally don't eat a lot of red meat. It's hard to process for our bodies, um, so to eat a ton of you know beef or steak you know, every day, we eat a little bit, but this helps supplement that. Yes, and um, even if you do eat red meat, and yes, your body does produce some naturally, creatine is a staple for us, and we notice when we take a break from creatine, um, we notice that we're, that the creatine is out of our body. Your it muscles will be a little flatter, you'll be a little bit, um, a little weaker. Like, we don't really train for strength, but I notice but, a little bit. Yeah, I do too. Um, and a little more sore, actually, my muscles helps take a little muscles. longer. It helps with, uh, <laughs> yeah, repair, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's some, there's some old, why, what's it called, wives' tales. Yeah, wives' tales. About tale. creatine. Um, there's some old myths that have been busted now for 50 years, but you still hear them around on the internet, and they're not true at all. The myths are that creatine bloats you. Creatine makes you look leaner. Creatine does not go in between your skin and the muscle and the fat. Creatine goes inside the muscle. Mm -hmm. So if anything, creatine makes you look leaner because it makes your muscles inflate and get them bigger So because it drives more water into the muscles. There's another myth about creatine. You do not have to cycle creatine. You don't have to now. No, but now, we choose we to. We choose to cycle everything that we take. That's a good point about supplements. You want to cycle everything, meaning give your body a break. Mm -hmm. Take it for six weeks, go off for a couple weeks, or whatever your cycle is to feel like your body can, you know. Uh, why, why cycling is important is because it makes products like creatine work better. Your body gets used to everything. Yeah. Whether that's, if you have one cup of coffee a day and you use that for your pre-workout, which sometimes we do, eventually that cup of coffee, your body's going to get used to it and it's not going to use it optim optimally. And we do take a break from coffee too. We take a break, like Kyle said, from everything. Your body does, it, get, it gets used to everything. It gets used to your exercise, which is why you have to change up the different types that you do. Um, it gets used to the food that you eat, the amounts you eat. That's why you're constantly having to keep trying new things. That's what plateaus are for. So if you give yourself a break from supplements, and we don't do it all at the same time. We'll do creatine, and then yeah. we'll do pre-workout, and um, you know we're always on a supplement or taking a supplement, I should say. Um, we're just generally cycling something else out at the yeah. time. Um, so yeah, do you have to cycle creatine? No. Scientifically, no, you don't. We choose to because it, it, we feel it works better when you cycle. It's kind of like shocking your body. Your body gets used to it, so you give it a break, and then you reintroduce it, and it's like a brand new thing to your body again, so then your body will utilize it a lot better. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so... We'll move on. See, he did have it in the bag, didn't he, my friends? So, now we are going on to something that we love called BCAAs, for short. Um, they are called, actually, in the long name, branch chain amino acids. Um, these are amazing. Um, branch chain amino acids are really good for helping to... <laughs> they're really good for helping to reduce um, 
the breakdown of your muscle tissue and um, in turn, because it does help reduce the breakdown, your muscles will feel less sore, less fatigued, and that will promote muscle growth in the end. It does not build your muscle, but it promotes muscle growth through the repairing of your tissue. Mostly, um, a lot of people use these for intra workout, meaning during your workout. And we do that. We do that. Um, a lot of people choose to sip on them in their water all day because they feel like it bridges the gaps between meals so that they're not losing as much muscle. And on days where we don't train, I generally still take in BCAAs. Um, even on, on cheat day, sometimes um, I like to drink BCAAs too because um, I don't get in as much water on cheat days just because I get so much during the week. I like to kind of go on strike. And we but mix it up. Yeah, yeah, it helps. You know, it helps you take in water a little bit better. And if you are just starting out and you want to sort of introduce yourself to supplements, this would be a good one um, to do, especially because it does help um, take in water. They have tons of amazing flavors. And so you'll want to drink your water because it tastes so good. And it's giving you amino acids and nutrients. And all of these products we bought with our own money. Yes. Um, we're not like these are not sponsors or nobody's telling us to promote a certain brand or type These are just actual ones we use. Yes. Okay, so um, We're gonna s finish this with some talking about pre-workouts pre-workouts pre-workouts. What are they? They are Generally in powder can come in pills um, We like the powders they come in flavors or non flavors and it gives you extra energy and focus. They generally contain caffeine, not all of them do, um, but they contain um, stuff that will give you good energy and good focus to give you a really, to help you have a, an extra good workout. You'll, you'll feel more focused. I feel stronger, like I can do more because I have more energy and more focus. Um, you, I feel like my mind muscle connection is so much better because it's giving me that energy and focus to power through a workout. Yeah. Um, we do cycle this, like Kyle said, because it um, it does work better when you've given it a break. There are some, or actually most of them, not all of them, contain something called beta alanine. If you're first starting to take a pre-workout and it, yours contains beta alanine, you may feel some tingling or some itching um, I get it on my hands, on my face, on my ears, my nose. You'll get a little itchy. Yeah. That's normal. That's, that's the beta normal. alanine. And what that does is it opens up your blood vessels to allow more blood flow. Um, so that's where you get the, the itchies from. Yeah. And or the tinglies. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's so tingly, like I want to itch myself sometimes. <laughs> that's why you have to do your research and um, look up the strength of the product know your own body if you're really sensitive to caffeine there are pre-workouts that have a large amount of caffeine versus some have more beta alanine and the mix is all different on all of them so do your research these are the ones yeah. we take um, some have no beta alanine too and there are a lot of people that don't like the tingles yeah. that take ones that don't have the tingles yeah. you know like for example this does not give me the tingles um, this is the tingle master that one gives me so many tingles I have to take half a scoop um, or I can't focus because I'm too tingly depends on you know? your size too like I love I love all of these but I like the preset um, because I know it's working and I, I feel that like it's in there it's giving me that energy and I feel like it's you know my blood is pumping already before I even start and this one um, this one gives like the right amount of tinglage. <laughs> yeah, this one's a good one too from Mutant Mutant Madness. Now this has a lot more caffeine than the others. So again, do your research. Yeah, it depends on what you like. Yeah. Do your research, figure out what you like in a pre-workout. And if you're just um, starting pre-workouts, probably yeah. don't, we didn't use them and you probably don't need them. But if you're starting to do a lot of intense, even if it's just cardio or weights and cardio, they really do help. They really are, you know, good for giving you stamina to make it through a long workout or to get at the end of a long day, like we all have jobs and lives and you know, 
some people we don't have kids but you have you know stuff and you still want to go in and, and kick butt in the gym and you might be draggy while this this, <laughs> this is what this stuff's for yeah and I mean they're not necessary but if you're gonna do an intense workout you're gonna want one they're nice to have yeah when you, they are. When you need it yeah we alternate between pre-workouts and coffee so that we're not always taking pre-workout um, but we love we do love our pre-workouts yeah um, yeah, so that's it for the supplements. Um, our staple supplements. Um, Number BCAAs, one would be BCAAs. We recommend first. Creatine would be second. Oh yeah, these these are just two different types of creatine. Yeah. Um, it comes. You can get it in a plain white powder form. There's no taste to it at all. And this is called monohydrate. Monohydrate, which is the just the basic creatine and this is a different type of uh, creatine in a pill form yeah yeah they both work really well um, the monohydrate is the one that has been tested the pills have not been this one is cheaper and works I think the best but this is really good stuff I, I like to take this right now um, but I, I do take this one as well yeah um, yeah so those would be our like staple ones but in addition to that, would definitely be a pre-workout. Um, at the end of the day, when we work out, I definitely, especially like towards the end of a week before a cheat day, when our glycogen is low, we really this is appreciate like that stuff. this is like our like king and queen. <laughs> we we need this. So, to conclude, my friends, if you are just starting out, do you need any of these? No. Probably not. They're supplements. Um, so yeah. They're meant to add in. To yeah. If your you life. have a lot of weight to lose, if you want a protein shake, sure, you can totally have one. They taste good and their macros are pretty good. They're great to up your protein. Yeah. They're great to up your protein. Um, but do you need one when you have a lot of weight to lose? No, probably not. Especially because when you're really heavy, um, we know this from experience, you can't really do a whole lot of moving. So, you don't really need that extra protein. It would be better for you to get it in food, but you can certainly have it. Um, you just you don't need it right make away. Make sure you're eating well on top of the protein. Yeah, you, yeah. Make sure that your diet is there. Um, that you're eating five to six meals a day. That you're not skipping meals. Um, don't use these as meal replacements. Don't take meal replacements. Um, food is the answer yeah. for that portioned food yeah. um, BCAAs especially if you're not a fan of getting water in and you're gonna need to take more water in when you're starting to lose weight BCAAs will help you do that like I said they taste delicious the all max amino core is our favorite um, and again we buy these with our own money you can We're get any sponsored. brand you know look up look up reviews like we said yeah Look but that, that's a good one if you're looking for a good one. Yes, that's a good one to start if, if you like. Um, and they have lots of good flavors. And BCAAs are a must. I would take them along your whole weight loss journey, muscle building yes. journey, fitness journey. I would take them all the time. Yes, agreed. Especially um, like if you have a job that doesn't allow you to eat as frequently. If you're going long periods you of time without food. Want to be um, sipping on BCAAs. BCAAs are good for that. Creatine. Um, we would say add in when you're starting to weight train. Mm -hmm. If you're starting to build muscle, you you want creatine. It's and great. When you have lost, you know, the bulk of your weight or a, a significant amount, and your workouts start getting more intense, then you can start upping your protein by adding in a protein shake here and there if you want. But in the beginning of your journey, I would say BCAAs, and that would be about it for supplements. Um, proper diet and move your body as much as you can and proper portion portioning your food and then um, when you're able to really get moving and get in the gym and kick butt pre-workout is you know very much appreciated yes and it's it's nice to have it does get the blood flowing it gives you that energy and focus it really does yeah but in the beginning if you have a lot of weight to lose probably don't probably need not. it um, coffee would probably do it if you like coffee or some sort of an energy drink or something. Yeah. Um, there's one thing I did want to mention um, with, in regards to meal replacements. Often, you, meal replacements can also be called 
appetite suppressants. Um, what meal replacements do is suppress your appetite. And that may work um, just like surgeries that make your stomach smaller um, or like the band surgeries that just make it harder for like make your stomach smaller. Um, yes, you will feel fuller faster, but if you are an emotional eater, um, and in my opinion, most people that are very heavy are, um, and I can say that because I've been there and I've talked to many people, Me too. you know, yes, and Kyle's been there too. Um, most people that have a lot of weight to lose are emotional eaters. So if you are taking an appetite suppressant thinking it's going to stop you from being hungry, emotional eating is that it's you're eating to fulfill your emotions instead of dealing with them. Yeah, your appetite isn't the problem. So you're going to eat even if you're full. I used to eat until I almost vomited, um, until I almost made myself physically sick. Even if I was full or didn't even want a food or like a food, I ate it anyway. So an appetite suppressant is not going to do you any good there because it's not your appetite that needs suppressing. Yeah. You need to deal with what's bothering you, what's getting, what's driving you to eat. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Do you yeah. have anything nope. to add? That was basically our supplement 101 guide. Yeah. From, from our opinion and our experience and what we actually use. So thank you guys for all your questions about it. Yeah, thank we you. hope we answered them. Um, if you have more, you know, leave them down below. Down there, boys yep. and girls and dogs um <laughs> so yeah um we hope you guys like this video don't forget to like and subscribe you know don't you because if you like that if you do it where's the tingly one you're getting the tingly pre-workout doom bye guys <laughs>